pretty cool video today. We are going to collect some eggs. I've been wanting to do this video for a while just to show the whole process from uh, you know, acknowledging the eggs as far as uh, you know, seeing them on, on the cameras that I have set up um, to actually digging them up, uh, prepping the eggs, putting them in the egg trays, and then putting, putting them in the incubators. And so um, I'm pretty excited. Uh, I have a lot of activity with the females right now. So I was hoping this would happen yesterday, not so much. Um, that's okay. Uh, I had a lot more time yesterday. This is, I think it's like seven in the morning, something like that right now. So, um, that's cool. Uh, I'm just happy it happened actually. And you know, um, I'm glad you like, hope you like it. Hope to see some questions as far as what you might have about, um, at least my process in breeding diamondback terrapins and, uh, you know, how I go about it. Because we have it on video, um, that I'll show you here in a second. I know exactly where she laid the eggs and I have moved the fake plant that I have in the nesting box out of the way. Um, I know exactly where to start digging. I don't know how deep, I don't know how many eggs. There might just be one, there could be, you know, I, I'm, I'm guessing there's probably six. I think last year her average clutch size was six and the year before that was the same. So, um, you know, if it's six, great. If it's uh, less than that, great. Uh, but anyway, we'll get into that and yeah, here we go. Notice how I'm being really careful when I remove the eggs to keep them facing the same direction, right? So I, I think that there's uh, a window of time where you have um, some leeway before the eggs will actually be harmed or you know the embryo inside will be harmed um, if you flip them. But essentially what, what can happen is you can, you can drown the embry embryo because they attach to um, the inside of the egg. And so when they're, when they're freshly laid like this, I, I, I'm fairly certain it's not that big of a deal, um, but I don't like to chance anything. So uh, I pick them up straight up, I dunk, in, dunk them in the water straight in, and then I place them in the incubation media the same exact way they were facing in the nest. So, and once the eggs dry a little bit, I'll actually take a marker and mark the top of them. So in case you know, something were to go wrong and you know, things dropped out of my hand or something, um, which believe it or not, uh, has happened uh, a few years ago. It was a bad deal. Um, but, so I know which way those eggs need to face. I have two trays set up. Um, one, the writing is blue. You can probably guess that is for males and this one here in red is for female. Okay, so we dug up six good looking eggs from Louise in her nest. Um, I'll show you those right here in a second. Um, yeah, I think I called it, right? Six? Yeah, I think it's, yeah. Anyway, her first clutch last year was six. Her first clutch the year before was six. I think she just might be a, a six egg laying turtle. Um, we'll see. Uh, so, yeah, I have four in the, in the tray that'll be incubated for male. I have two in the tray that'll be incubated for female. Um, I am still waiting on my other incubator. Uh, they're on back order, and so it should be here actually either late this week or early next week. So uh, once that comes in, I'll transfer from my old incubator um, into that one for the females. Uh, the males will go right in the, the new incubator that I have set up. <clears throat> but yeah, I'll show you how we track all that stuff as well. Um, it's pretty cool. Um, yeah, but let's check out the eggs. Okay, so we collected the eggs and that went fairly smooth. And now I wanna show you guys my incubators here. So. I used these two right here, which you can't see, but I can maybe help you. There we go. Uh, these two here, I've used for three years. I built them um, out of wine refrigerators, and uh, they're cool. They work. Um, they are not quite as dialed in as I, I wish 
they were. And so what I, I've done is I've actually, uh, I have new incubators, or I have one so far, the other one is showing up short. They are uh, thermoscientific laboratory incubators, and so um, they are dialed in, right? Um, so they're, they're used for uh, laboratories that would do uh, testing on, you know, humans, uh, their, their blood, the urine, uh, stool samples, things like that. Uh, microbiology, uh, pathology stuff, um, and so these things are, they're kind of like the, the standard, and so I have calibrated my two old incubators to actually uh, make sure that they read the same temperatures that this does, and so <clears throat> because, in case you don't know, uh, terrapins, like a lot of other reptiles, they their, their sex is actually determined by the temperature in which they are incubated at. And so um, males, uh, typically uh, what I shoot for is like 79 degrees, 79 and a half uh, degrees. And then uh, for females, I go for 85 and a half. Um, 86, I, I don't like to go that high. Some people do and they have good luck. Um, but uh, if you go too high, you can risk uh, split scoots and things like that. So um, anything in, in the middle uh, between those two numbers will produce kind of a, a mixed clutch of males and females. But so I have uh, you know three incubators currently set up. I will have four, um, and I'll just use my old ones as backups. And so uh, I have two trays here. The ones I showed you earlier, uh, they are marked and. I have four in the male uh, tray and I have two in the female from that clutch from Louise and it looks like Lainey is actually uh, digging currently. She's pacing around the nesting box quite a bit and so if I'm distracted, I'm sorry. Um, but so uh, I have the eggs here and I will show you how I mark them and then also how they go into the incubator. So here's my four eggs. I take a Sharpie and I just go like this. I'd say that. Okay. So you may not be able to see very well. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit, I can't. So, those straight lines are all I put on there. Because um, all my documentation for this clutch and you know, what, how I can track, you know, who laid it, uh, what date, things like that, that is all written on my label. So the lines on the eggs are really just to keep, uh, keep track of which way the egg is facing. Um, you know, those lines will always be up. I don't mess with the eggs when they're in the incubator. I might peek in there occasionally, but that's about it. So until they hatch, you know, that's it. Now, heaven forbid, if there was a situation where I had to move the eggs, um, you know, those lines just show me, hey, this side up. Um, since they're already in their, uh, their, their trays, you know, I'm kind of good to go at this point. So I am going to grab that so uh, I can mark the four. One, two, three, four. And that is clutch 22.01 male. One thing to note is that all of these have holes that I've drilled in them um, in the corners and then also on the sides for ventilation. Um, that just allows fresh air to get in there, but not too much so it dries out. Um, but so I have about 30 of these things, uh, you know, prepped and ready to go. So now we wait, right? So these eggs take roughly 60 days to incubate. Um, the females being at the higher temperatures, which is 85 and a half, yeah, um, they can hatch a little bit more. Uh, but the males incubating around 79 degrees, they're going to take every bit of that 60 days, typically. 
So today being the 11th, you know, early June, um, probably that first week, um, second week possibly, uh, should be seeing some babies hatching, which is pretty dang exciting. Uh, this is my favorite time of year. Uh, yeah, and usually about a month after that, we're gonna be ready to go to new homes. Um, but you know, we'll just uh, kind of sit tight and cross our fingers and, and hope everything goes smooth. These guys here are how I monitor my temperature and humidity inside the incubators. Uh, they're made by a company called Gobi. Um, they've been around for a little while. Uh, a lot of people in the reptile industry know of Gobi just because it's one of the few companies who makes intelligent uh, devices that can monitor things like this and do it well. Um, you can handle it all through an app. Um, it's pretty user friendly. Uh, actually, most of the stuff I have in, in my facility here is all uh, controlled by, by Gobi, it's either a Gobi product or it's a Gobi sensor, it's a Gobi switch. Um, and so there's, there's, there's a lot that they offer that can benefit people who keep reptiles. Um, and it's accurate, uh, you know, so they do give you the ability to calibrate. So I've calibrated all three of these to my thermoscientific incubator because I, I trust it the most. Um, the humidity, um, I, I don't have a way to calibrate that truly, but uh, I do know that when I add uh, you know, a, a humidity source inside the incubator, I can see those numbers climb. And so I, I know it's giving me a somewhat accurate reading and, and I trust it. So um, anyway, I, I do recommend these. Uh, if, if you're needing something quick, I would also urge you to check out um, uh, a couple of BivTech products. So they, uh, Ryan and his wife, uh, I, I love their whole take on everything, right? So they are, uh, really setting out to do some some cool stuff that, that could kind of revolutionize some of the things in our hobby um, They have a whole smart system that is going to be able to monitor control um, You can observe all through an app on your phone and the you know different devices You would actually set up either in your room in the enclosures uh, in an incubator whatever it might be uh, But it's all geared for reptile keepers. Uh, that's the coolest thing about it um, I know it's something I've felt that our hobby needed for a long time. Um, I mean, really, if you think about it, you know, every other every other thing out there uh, that's you know you can even equate to keeping reptiles, uh, reef the reef hobby, for example, you know, saltwater aquariums. Oh my gosh, they've had you know smart systems for years, and not to mention they're just so stinking cool. So we can do the same. Um, we can probably do better because we have cooler stuff, uh, in my opinion. But anyway, um, check them out. Uh, you know, if you're just needing something, you know, small, uh, just like a little sensor or something, I, I, I do recommend these just because I have had good luck with them. Um, you might, you know, after talking to Ryan or seeing their products, I, I definitely say check those out first, uh, just because I think that they're doing some cool stuff and uh, love to support people who, uh, who uh, you know, support us. So anyway, so that's that. Uh, I have one of these in each, incub each incubator. Um, I'm going to put this one back because my readings going to be all off now, but uh, didn't know if that would follow me, so it did. Um, let me see if I can. Okay, so I also want to show you guys my egg cart. So this one lives out there at a spot for it, out by the tubs, and <clears throat> it's essentially everything I need to collect some eggs. Uh, I have gloves, I have pens, markers, toothbrush, some tools if a uh, turtle ever needs a uh, you know, help like, you know, shedding its food or, or, or just needs anything. Um, you know, that's gonna, you know, be just kind of a uh, emergency kit, sort of. Um, I have sterile syringes. I have a vial of oxytocin. And I have a bunch of egg trays that are blank and not filled with media. Um, I don't have them filled with media yet because I don't want it to dry out. These are drilled, so, they would essentially just be, uh, you know, losing that moisture to sit in there. So what I do is I have this five gallon bucket down here with a gamma seal uh, lid on it, and it's full of hatchery. Um, and I have, a, I have another one of these that's just stored essentially, it's ready to go. Um, but this cart is kind of what I just push around when I'm getting eggs. Uh, it, it, saves me a bunch of walking back and forth. This place isn't huge, 
onions, but you know, when you have long rows of tubs and you can't really just walk through them, you can't jump over them, um, it's handy to have all this stuff in one place. So <clears throat> I urge you, even if uh, you know you just have a, a small group of turtles, at least you know get a little uh, rubber made, you know, like a, a, a handheld like tub to keep those kind of items in. Uh, you know, it can make your life just a little bit easier. Want to thank you for checking out the video. Uh, once again, I was a little long-winded, I think, but hey, if you suck it out, I appreciate it. And uh, uh, thank you for coming by. So if you have any questions, comments, whatever, just uh, either leave a comment or shoot me a message. I'm happy to answer any questions I can if, you know, if I can. So anyway, till next time. Thanks a lot.